So starting from the partnership, what do you know about partnership? Partnership is uh, basically two or more people. Yes, when more when two or more than two people join their hands together to run a business. There are more than one owners in a in a business that is known as partnership. So today we'll be discussing about what is partnership and how it differs from a joint venture. And in business studies, you might have gone through the difference between partnership and joint ventures. If not, you will, but still today we'll be discussing about what's the difference between these two things. Then we'll be explaining the rules which are relating to the number of partners, that how much partners can be added into a business and what is the total number that is allowed, what should be the minimal number. And then we'll be distinguishing between the limited partners and general partners. There will be two types of partners. One is called as limited partner, other is called as general partners. Then we'll describe the features of partnership agreement. What is partnership agreements and what are the things that should be covered in that agreement? Then we'll explain what will happen if no agreement exists. If there is no agreement between two partners in written form, what are the rules that are, that are applied while doing the accounting? We'll discuss that and how to share profit and losses in that case if there is no agreement and then at the last we'll be drawing a ledger accounts and financial statements for a partnership in this chapter <clears throat> so starting from the need of the partnership that when why is there is a need of partnership because one person cannot invest that amount of money that is required for a growing business maybe the business the nature of the business is it needs more investment or it needs more people to manage it one person cannot manage a single business if that's a case we normally go for the partnerships and unlike the joint ventures what is the difference the partnership is of permanent or long term in nature two and more than two people join their hand for a long term goals and they share everything they share profits they share losses they share their financials, they share their accounting information, they share their management skills, they share each and everything in partnership. But in joint venture, it's a short term agreement between two companies, not two people, agreement between two companies. So joint venture is an agreement between two companies when they are starting some new project. And joint ventures are of short term in nature and are particularly sharing profit and losses of one project only. Giving an example, there can be partnership between Mr. A and Mr. B and they might be doing a business of selling juices and it is a permanent nature. But a joint venture may be on one particular project, two companies join their hands like Beharia town and DHA can join their hands for a new sector that has been built in some new area. So that is called as joint venture. So that is called as joint venture. A joint venture is short term is nature. Plus it is limited to one project only. And you share profit and losses of that project only. Basically you are sharing your profit and losses for one project. But in the case of partnerships, you are sharing profit and losses for everything, for every operation of a business. So that's the overview of the difference between a joint venture and a partnership. But you will discuss these things in detail in business studies. So for the time being, it is evident that the partnership is long term and we share everything uh, as far as operations and profit and losses are concerned. But in joint ventures, it is temporary in nature and we share profit and losses just for a particular project, not everything. And then a nature of partnership. Partnership is formed obviously to make more profits, to earn more profits. And similarly, to earning the more profits, it is similarly we try to <clears throat> share the losses as well. We share the profits 
as well as we share the losses. So in case of loss, we share that and the burden is not shifted on just one person so that they can recover easily. Then there is a point which is called a limited partner. Who is limited partner? <clears throat> Before telling you about the limited partner, you already know that a sole trader and partnership, the feature of that these two companies is that it has got an unlimited liability. If you've gone through the partnership and sole trader and joint stock companies and public limited and private limited companies, so you have you might have gone through the differences, which is that the sole trader and partnership are having unlimited liabilities. That means the personal belongings of the partners can be sold in order to pay back the loan of a business that is called as unlimited liability. But that never happens in public or private limited companies in public and private limited companies. The loan is to be paid back by the business only and you just lose whatever you have invested in the business. You cannot lose more than that. The, on the people who wants to take money from the business cannot come to you and sell your personal belongings to pay back that money that is called as a limited liability. So sole trader and partners have got an unlimited liability, whereas the public and private limited company have got limited liability. But there is one case in partnership in which the liability can be limited. Normally it is unlimited liability. But in one case that can be called as a limited liability partner. And it must obey the law as given in the Partnership Act of 1890. If there is a limited partner as described in the section 41.3 below, it must also comply with the Limited Partnership Act of 1907. And what is limited partnership? Limited partnership, a partnership containing one or more limited partners. And by limited partner, we mean that the liability of those partners will be limited. Got it? So normally in a partnership, the liability of each partner is unlimited. That means your personal belongings can be sold in order to pay back the debt of a business. But still, the law gives you an opportunity that there may be one or more than one limited partners. So let's suppose if there are two partners, one partner can be a limited partner. If there are three partners, there can be two partners which can be limited. But there should be at least one partner which will be called as unlimited partner so that we can say the partnership is unlimited. Got it? So if there are two partners, there should be at least one partner who is having an unlimited liability. If there are five partners, there should be at least one partner who's having an unlimited liability. At least one, there should be one. So a limited partner is somebody who has got a limited liability. That means his personal belongings cannot be sold in order to pay back the debt. But there will be just one partner, at least one partner, and it is the law that it has to be unlimited. And rest of the things are given in the details in theoretical portions go through that. And all of the partners who are not limited partners are known as journal partners. So in partnerships, we always have two types of partners. Got it? So one type is called as general partners. Other is called as limited partners. Who are the general partners having an unlimited liability? And there should be at least one partner should be general partner or unlimited partners. So there should be at least one partner who should be general in nature. Got it? And then there are limited partners. And what do you mean by limited partners? Having limited liability that they try to save their personal belongings and they say we will be the limited partners. So their liability is limited. And there can be more than one partner who are, who are the limited partners, but the rule says that there should be at least one partner who will be unlimited partner so that we can say the partnership is unlimited. 
got it then the next is the partnership agreement okay whenever we do and we are doing the partnership we make an agreement and what should be the content of that agreement what should be written in that agreement the capital to be contributed by each partners so if there are two partners what is the amount of capital they are investing in the business one partner is giving 50000 other is giving 30000 so it should be written in the partnership agreement that mr a has invested 50000 and mr b has invested 30000 in the business on 1st january 2018 so this is a, the capital amount of the country the capital contribution of the partner should be mentioned the second thing is ratio in which partners uh, sorry ratio in which profits or losses are to be shared so first thing is the amount of capital second thing is so partner a has invested let's suppose 50000 as, as capital and partner b has invested let's suppose 30000 as capital then there then there will be some partners uh, who will agree upon different profit and loss sharing ratio so the second thing which should be mentioned is profit or loss sharing ratio so in which ratio you will share profit or losses you can say partner a will have one over two half share and partner b and partner b can have another half share of that so if there are two partners their profit and loss sharing ratio is one over two or one over two they can say that but there can be it can be different you can also say that the profit and loss sharing ratio for partner a is let's suppose one over three and two over three for partner b they can agree on any ratio so you can convert that in percentage as well so one over two one over two means 50 percent each 50 percent for one partner 50 percent for other partner one over three and two over three means that he is getting 33 percent and other is getting around 66 percent i he, i hope that you already know how to convert fraction into percentage one over three multiplied by 100 two over three multiplied by 100 that is how you find the percentage so you can convert that in percentage if you want to get yourself acquainted with that else normally the partnership given in, in in ratios one over three two over three one over two one over two so you have to mention in an agreement what is the ratio of profit and losses then the rate of interest if any to be paid on capital before the profits are shared so the rate of interest on capital so this the third thing is first thing was capital second thing was profit and loss third thing is your rate of interest on capital what is interest on capital that is the amount of interest you will be paying to the partners on capital so the idea behind rate of interest on capital is <clears throat> supposedly the owners initially invested 50000 and 30000 when they were starting the business this is invested and then they agreed that there will be a profit and loss sharing ratio of one over two one over two or one over three two over three whatever it is but during the time or during the operations of the business let's suppose the business needs twenty thousand more for a few months or a one year there is one option we say that okay invested in the capital but sometimes what we do is rather taking the loan from the bank basically we take a loan from the owner and we say okay partner a has got the money and we say okay partner a will give 20000 as additional capital there will be a word called as additional capital what is additional capital the amount of capital invested during the time <clears throat> and the investment and the interest is given on that additional capital because we are going we're getting this additional capital for let's suppose one year and 
there should be it should be mentioned that what is the rate of interest we will pay back to that owner so you will not confuse yourself with the word capital whenever there is an additional capital it means it is called as a loan a loan just like you are taking loan from the bank over here you are taking a loan from the partner so if you are taking loan a, from the owner if you are taking loan from the partner that means you have to pay back some interest you have to give some interest and you have to mention let's suppose you say that we will give 5% interest on capital every year you can say 10% interest on capital so but whatever it is you will have to remember you have to mention this that if we need money during the operations of the business and if we are taking loan from the partner what will be the interest rate we should pay to that partner if partner a is investing 20000 he will get 5% if partner b is investing 20000 he will get 5% and you know about the opportunity cost concept that if they haven't invested in this business they might have invested that 20000 in the bank and they will be getting that 5% out of that bank so if they are giving this business they must have to get something out of it so 5% interest in capital is basically the amount of interest which we are paying to the owner so this is the amount paid to the owner for using his money just like bank just like we consider we pay interest loan from while taking loan from the bank so this is the interest on capital that has to be mentioned in the partnership agreement then another thing is which is called as rate of interest on drawings just like capital let's suppose partner b has withdrawn 10000 from the business we could have used this money in the operations but let's suppose if he he needs that money for some time and he takes out 10000 what we do is we say if you are taking out money if you are taking loan from the business now this is exactly the opposite of the previous thing previously the owner was giving loan to the business in this situation business is giving loan to the owner so if he says okay i am getting 10000 rupees for the fees and he wants to use it for one year we have to mention the interest on that as well let's suppose if we say there is going to be 6% interest on drawings so the owner who is getting this money he will be the owner or the partner will pay us us means will pay business 6% interest annually and this will be kind of an earning of the business that we will get interest and while we were discussing about interest you already know about the interest paid and interest received in the case of interest on capital actually business is paying the interest so it is interest paid by business to owner so interest paid is always over expense of the business and for us it's a expense and we basically add it to the capital just like we add profit to the amount of capital in statement of financial position got it so this is going to be the transaction that interest paid whenever we are paying the interest it is called as interest paid by the business to the owner now other way round is if we are in receiving interest so it is going to be we are interest received by interest is basically received by business so interest received is always a revenue you already know about that and who is paying that by the partner and from that partner we deduct from capital of that partner got it so this is how we do the transactions 
रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट ऑन कैपिटल इंटरेस्ट ऑन कैपिटल इज बेसिकली और एक्सपेंस एंड वी एड इट इन द स्टेटमेंट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल पोजिशन इन दैपिटल अदर वे राउंड द इंटरेस्ट ऑन ड्राइंग इज इंटरेस्ट रिसीव्ड इट इज द रेवेन्यू फॉर द बिजनेस एंड अदर वे राउंड इट इज गोइंग टू बी डिडक्टेड फ्रॉम कैपिटल ठीक है सो यू ऑलरेडी नो द जनरल एंट्री ऑफ दिस हाउ टू मेक द जनरल एंट्री फॉर दीज टू थिंग्स interest on capital and interest on drawings then salaries to be paid to the partners the fifth thing that is important and will be mentioned is the salaries to the partner now the question is why we are paying salaries to the owners the reason is sometimes it is decided that partner a let's suppose gives eight hours to business while partner b can't give any time to business so the partner who is giving time to the business he could have given those 8 hours to something as to some other business and could have taken a salary but if he is given this 8 hours to current business so he must be given a salary for that because partner a is giving 8 hours and partner b is giving nothing so the partner a who is giving time to the business he should be given the salary so salaries to the partner is salary you know for the business it's an expense salary of partner is always an expense for the business and other way around it is given to the partner so it is added to the capital on other side it is added to the capital salary is an expense for the business and in a statement of financial position you will add to the salary is basically given to the capital is added to the amount of capital of that partner so you can add it to the capital of partner a because partner a is getting the salary and for the business it's going to be an expense and sixth thing is the arrangement for the admission of new partners so in the agreement you must mention that if during the operations after 5 years or after 10 year we may need to expand the business we may need more investments we may need somebody to manage the business and if we want to add some new partner into the business how would we add that what will be the rules and regulations during that addition so it has to be written in the agreement and procedures to be carried out when the partner retires or dies so if one of us out of three partners if partner a dies or partner a retires what should we do how would we distribute the profits how much money will we pay to the person who is dead or who is retire and how will we calculate the value of the goodwill we'll be discussing about that goodwill in later chapter so basically these procedures of addition and subtraction of partners will be mentioned in the partnership agreements then uh, it is discussed in detail about the capital contributions that what are the contributions of the partner that who is investing how much amount of capital profit and loss sharing ratios we have already discussed about that that partner a and b can share profit and losses in 1 over 2 1 over 2 sharing ratio or it can be the ratio can be 1 over 3 2 over 3 so whatever the ratio is he has basically discussed about that if allen is getting 2 over 3 and beat is getting 1 over 3 how will we distribute the net profits let's suppose if the net profit of a firm is 36000 allen has 2 over 3 share in the profit so what we do is 36000 multiply by 2 over 3 so how would you distribute the profit let's suppose if the profit is 36000 and the sharing ratio is 2 over 3 and 1 over 3 so if the ratio is 2 over 3 how would you find it 2 over 3 multiply by 36000 got it and then 1 over 3 per se partner b who has got a share of 1 over 3 how would you calculate that 1 over 3 multiply by 36000 So two over three multiplied by thirty-six thousand is twenty-four thousand, and one over three multiplied by thirty-six thousand is twelve thousand. So that means 
partner A who is having a share of 2 over 3 and partner B who is having a share of 1 over 3 will get these amounts. So partner A will get 24,000 from the profit and partner B will get 12,000 share from the profit. And the total profit is 36,000. So this is how you distribute that 36,000 in partner A and partner B. So this is how he has solved that 36,000 multiplied by 2 over 3 is distributed to partner A which is called as Allen and the amount is 24,000. Beat 1 over 3 that is 12,000. In the second year, the profit was 48,000. So 48,000 multiplied by 2 over 3 for Allen and 1 over 3 for Beat. Simple mathematics. So just for, you can find out the profit, distribute the profits according to the profit and loss sharing ratio, just like that. Then we have discussed about interest and capital. And then we have discussed about interest on drawings. And then we have discussed about the partnership salaries. And then we've discussed about the, we haven't discussed this. This is the another thing which we can pay to the partner. It's called as performance related pays to the partners. Sometimes just because of one partner, we increase our sales. Let's suppose there was a friend of partner A due to which we have made an extensive sale of 10,000 additional units. So that means partner A is helping the business extensively. So we can say that we can pay performance related pay just like we are paying the salaries to the partners. So we can say that we are paying, we're giving the performance related pay to those partners. Getting it? Okay. So, and the next one is, uh, so the questions are that, okay, I'll, I'll send you the recording as well. Performance related pays to the part is basically whenever due to some partner we are have increased sales or sometimes we the business has been helped out by some particular partner due to his relations or business relations or partnerships with other businesses. So we can allocate the performance related pay to the particular partner just and this has been done just like you are distributing the salaries. Now the next is the example of distribution of profits. So this is the format which you will remember. Suppose that a company will have a profit of 50,000 at the start. What we do is, this is kind of an income statement. So what we do is, we basically add interest on drawings, we deduct salary from the income, we deduct interest on capitals, and we deduct the salaries, and we at the end of the day, whatever the profit is left is going to be distributed among the partners. Got it? So we will uh, solve one example related to this and we'll see that how to solve uh, these all, all three part, three or four parts. Now coming to the question number one. Black, Brown and Cook are partners. They share profit and losses in the ratio of 2 over 9, 1 over 3, and 4 over 9, respectively. For the years ended 31st July 2002, their capital amounts remained fixed at the following amounts. These are the capital investment by the Black. Black has invested 60,000. Brown invested 40,000. Cook invested 20,000 in the business. They have agreed to give each other a 6% interest per annum on their capital. So there is 6% interest on capital. In addition to the above partnership, salaries of 30,000 for Brown and 18,000 for Cook are to be charged. So you have to give 30,000 salary to Brown and 18,000 to Cook. Then the net profit of the partnership before taking any of the above into account was triple one, triple zero. So you have got the profit of triple one, triple zero, which needs to be distributed. You are required to drop an appropriation account for the partnership for the year ended 31st July, 2002. So what we need to do is, We'll start with the amount of profit and we'll be distributing interest and capital, interest and drawings and give the salaries and whatever is left, we will distribute that according to the ratio. Let me solve that question for you. So starting from profit. So what is the profit before 
distribution distribution profit before distribution is it's given in the question he says the net profit of the party before taking any of the above into account was triple one triple zero so the the profit is triple one triple zero so remember this thing you add one thing and you subtract two things the the thing which is added to the profit is what thing we add to the profit the revenues the revenues are added always to the profit and expenses are subtracted from the profit is it so what are the revenues for the company so the revenues are as we were discussing earlier i have told you that there were two things which is called as interest on capital and interest on drawings interest on capital was your expense and interest on drawing was your revenue got it so interest on drawings is your revenue so we call it interest on drawings is always added you just you can just remember this thing interest on drawing is always added and what we subtract interest on capital of each partner interest on capital uh, for partner a and partner b and then what we subtract we basically subtract the salary of partners so these are the two things which are subtracted from the partner because we have to give them the salary and at the end we get super profits the term which you use after distributing the interests and salaries is known as super profit got it so remember this performer profit before distribution then add interest on drawings subtract interest on capital subtract salary of partners and then we'll reach at the figure of super profit so let's start with interest on drawings if it is given in the question so he says that they have agreed to give each other six percent interest per annum on capital but there is no drawings given in the question so interest on drawings and drawings itself sorry sorry drawings are distributed uh, sorry did, deducted from the x profits so you can mention drawings itself as well so this is the complete performer interest on drawings is added interest on capital salary of partners and drawings of partners are basically subtracted once you will solve like three four questions you will remember this performer and this there is no harm in it and in remembering that as well so let's start with interest on drawings there is no amount of interest on drawings given so i'll mark x axis interest on capital so for each partner you have to find interest on capital for each partner separately so interest on capital for partner a and interest on capital for partner b and if there are names you can use the names if there are names over there black brown and cook in this question so there are three partners so partner which is called as black partner which is called as brown and partner which is called as the name of the third part should be yellow black brown and yellow but they are saying it's a cook so interest and capital for partner black brown and cook separately what is the interest rate six percent interest and what is the amount of capital of black sixty thousand so black has invested sixty thousand and what is the rate six percent multiply by six percent what is the amount invested by brown in the question it is forty thousand so forty thousand of capital and six percent we're giving interest on that capital and then cook has invested twenty thousand and we're giving six percent so giving six percent to everyone on their amounts of capital got it because six percent is the amount 
which is uh, the rate which is mentioned against the capital. So let's find 6% of 6,000, what, what is the amount? The amount will be 3,600, is it? If I can you help me out in calculating? Second is 6% yes, six, six of 40,000, that is 2,400. And the last one is 6% 6, 6 of 20,000, that is 1,200. So combining these three together, and you have to subtract these amount, remember this. The total of these amount is, what is the total? Thirty-six plus twenty-four plus twelve. That is seven thousand two hundred. So total is seven thousand two hundred for this case. Then the salaries of the partners. What is the salary of the partner to be given? The salary of thirty thousand to Brown and eighteen thousand to Cook. So you have to give. Brown and Cook two salaries and then drawings of the part. There are no drawings of the partners. So what you need to do is you just put salary of the partners and deduct these two amounts. Triple one, triple zero, minus 7200 because you need to subtract that. I can put subtraction amount over there. And then whatever the salary of the partner, just mention it and subtract it out from this, whatever the amount is. So this 11, Triple one, triple zero, minus seventy two hundred, minus this amount, you will reach at the level of super profit. So just you need to complete this review of question two thirty one point one, and then at the end I'll discuss that question in the next class.